All right, so it's uh, class number 20. We're getting down to it. Wednesday the 12th. Uh, we'll talk a little gravity today. It broke up into two parts. The first part will be gravity. Um, and the second, and a little bit of uh, Planck's, Planck's equation. And then uh, the second part will be blue day for test 6A. We'll do a video key. Oh, <laughs> look at that. Woo! Eight days. Eight sessions left. Eight sessions. That's pre June. In June, we'll do the in June, we'll be doing the from gravity to ultimate fighting tool. Now, tomorrow night um, is the flash off. And you all have a bit of an advantage over the other students. Uh, they're a little upset about this because you're more used to on the keyboards. Cause we're going to do it your way, not their way. They're just used to shouting it out. And normally you have buzzers in class and they buzz in like on flash off, but uh, we can't all get together that way. So instead we're going to do it your way, which is through the chat. So make sure you show up tomorrow night, same, same place, same channel, uh, seven to seven forty five. And if you win, I still got to figure this out. You'll get whatever comparable package they would have gotten. You'll get another version of uh, all right, so make sure you're, and you get, so it's legal to bring, uh, you know, crazy Uncle Eddie with you um, if he, you know, if he's uh, a big Doors fan or something, uh, some obscure kind of music, then, because um, this is going to be, I'm going to hit all the genres. I'm going to take it back from Benny Goodman in the 1940s up to what happened yesterday. So better bring along your little sis too. All right, so you can all sit around and then we'll, uh, whoever wins that. All right. So that's tomorrow night. Don't forget. Okay. That's it for announcements. Uh, to keep up with class, you need to have uh, the last two true false ones done on six, seven. I'm going to post a key on that where I go over where everyone's written out all explanations of why they're false. I'll try and post that tonight. Uh, then six, four and five, we finished up six, four, four point four and five. Uh, we're out. The homework tonight is number six on six four. So that wraps up six four. That means that you are going to have to turn it in. And let's go ahead and put a date on you for, I'll put a note here. Uh, virtual, we'll turn that in. You will turn in, turn, you'll submit. I'm saying I'll turn in, you'll submit through Canvas uh, 6.4 on Sunday. Uh, midnight and that whatever the date is on Sunday right, coming up. Okay. So uh, it'll be worth, I don't know, it'll be worth uh, a lot of points, at least 20, maybe 30 points. Uh, on the, on the um, fault statements, I'll, like I say, I'll post a key on this, but uh Number six, it says, hopefully you're, we're keeping the, keeping up with this. The apparent snapping back of my head when I throw the trunk of my body forward is a physical reality of Newton's third law of motion. It's really Newton's first law. If I consider my whole body as one body, it's Newton's first law, right? I'm trying to keep my center of mass in the same place. Newton's first law, first law of motion says your center of mass will not change unless acted upon by an external force. And me throwing my trunk forward, like if I'm floating around in space, because he always, well, you're pushing off the floor. Okay, let's say I'm floating around in space. If I push the front part of my body forward, my head goes back to keep my center of mass in the same place. You could, on this one, I don't like this question, because you could say, well, I'm calling my head one body and the rest of, the rest of me another body. In that case, it is Newton's third law. Seven has three problems with it. There's three mistakes. Uh, first off, it says an object will accelerate when any force acts on it. Well, that's not really true. If it's a, if it's a balanced force, it's not going to accelerate. 
uh, if, if I put a force on this uh, table right here, I'm putting a force on it. It's not accelerating because I didn't put enough force on it. So any force is stretching it. If you said any unbalanced force, uh, that's a little better. And that acceleration will be directly proportional to the mass. What? F equals MA, mass and acceleration on the same side of the equation of the equal sign. Therefore, if acceleration goes up, mass has to go down. Those are inversely proportional. So if you change that directly to inversely, uh, and then uh, according to Newton's first law of motion, what? It's Newton's second law of motion, F equals MA. You just, you shouldn't get those laws mixed up. That ain't not cool. They won't laugh at you in front of your face, uh, but when you leave the room uh, and you're in college and you're getting those mixed up, they will snicker, okay? You'll become the butt of their jokes. So do not put yourself in that situation. Now, if what I just went over, you go, what is he talking about? You should be keeping up with the homework. Okay, that was homework last night. Okay. Now we, okay, so I went around and checked number five, I'm uh, sorry, number four, that was the homework part. Uh, we didn't really talk about it, but I went around and checked it and most of them had something done on it. So they got one or two stamps. Yesterday, we talked about uh, this one, number five, we at least set it up. We talked about the equation. Um, which one are we at? We're over here. Okay, there's, this is us. Talked about the equation, uh, went through all that. That's all on the video from yesterday. Talked about Cavendish experiment, which I'll talk about again in a minute here. Um, and then while I was going around, they were they're supposed to work on number six. Six is due tomorrow. That wraps up six, four. And we got to talking about um, this equation. This is also a top five equation in physics. This is Planck's equation and Max Planck. So we're looking at late 1800s, um, 1890s, uh, the uh, black body radiation and all. He came up with E is equal to H nu, which he didn't, he couldn't believe either. Uh, but that H, now this is, okay, it's E equals, actually the actual formula is uh, E equals H nu, but this is nu in U. And it, I, when I first started teaching physics, uh, I was a purist and said, well, we have to do the symbols that the way they are. And that's what nu looks like. It's actually more like this. Um, and it, students kept getting it mixed up with velocity. And so I had way too many misconceptions. And so I said, okay, okay, okay. We're just gonna make it this F and this stands for frequency. And these are for electromagnetic waves, okay? So like for instance, uh, for light, Roy G. Biv, right? Red is the lowest energy. It's the lowest frequency. Uh, with red, with, with red light, with red, you're on a wavelength of roughly depends, let's say around 700 nanometers or maybe plus or minus 50, but around there. And then with, with blue or, or um, violet, you're at a wavelength of about 400 nanometers. And this is the range that humans can see. Well, this is the F. This is the F for red. This is the frequency. Ah, come on. This is the frequency for red. And then this is the frequency for purple. Okay. So the red then, because it is lower frequency. Uh, oh, sorry. That's the wavelength. Hello. Wavelength. There's a misconception for you. That's the wavelength. And this is the wavelength. So frequency, um, actual, uh, what, there's an old joke, uh, what's new, C over lambda. So uh, new, or we say F is equal to C over lambda. So they're related by the speed of light. This is all stuff. This is all stuff that you wouldn't have to worry about until you're in modern physics. So you're, if you go that far, your third semester of physics, is a lot about this. Some of this is in ENM, but mostly it gets involved with quantum. This is a quantum idea. So anyway, um, 
the point is that the purple's got a tighter frequency, a higher frequency, a, a shorter wavelength that means a higher frequency. Uh, they're inversely proportional. So therefore, uh, it has higher it has higher energy. So like blue light is a higher energy than red light. So CDs um, and CD players are red light. They're, they're, they're laser light in the CD, but it's a red light. And so it can pick up uh, pits. Uh, the CD spins like 5,400 RPM and it can pick up the pits. It has on ones and zeros on, kind of turns into digitizes it, right? Well, Blu-ray, blue lasers are much higher frequency and can get a lot more as they spin, pick up a lot more pits. And so you get a lot more information in a Blu-ray than you do in a CD. And so that's, that's a good example of higher energy for blue, higher frequency, higher energy. All right. There's a lot. That's a, that's a Nichols uh, tour of E is equal to H new, but that's H. Look how small that is. We are talking quantum level uh, size difference. There's something called that's a Planck. That's Planck's number. And by the way, this number is on the. I think it's in the gold record that we sent off uh, to uh, on Voyager. You know, to interstellar space. Uh, we're what we're wanting the alien race to know. Whoever comes across this, that we know what H is. That we're dangerous now. Um, we've done it for about 120 years. Uh, and this this is the this is the pixel for what makes up space time. They they have their own age. They they know what age is. Uh, so um, I was telling the kids that that back in the day, if you had a one uh, megapixel camera, oh my gosh, you were the bee's knees. And then I worked all summer with a physicist, and at the end of the summer, he gave me his camera as a four megapixel. I treasured that thing for a couple of years. Well, now, you know, 12 megapixels is no big deal. Well, so a pixel, when I keep, if I keep zooming into a picture, right, it eventually looks like Legos all blocked. This is the pixels, this Planck length, which is related to Planck's equation. This Planck length is the pixel for space time. So if I were to keep blowing up this room, blowing it up and zooming in and zooming in and zooming into this room, it would eventually become pixelated and the length of those pixels would be on this order of H. So it is pretty important in quantum physics. Uh, yeah. So anyway, I thought, well, it'd be fun for you to do a little unit analysis using that equation and maybe some units you don't normally deal with like picojoules, uh, you know, things like that. Okay, so that's your homework. Uh, if you go to Ask Me Learning, you can. It's now live, and tonight I'm going to send you a. Um, I'll send you an email today sometime. You'll probably get it in your student email, or your parents will get it or something. And that's just to advertise our thing for the summer. If you want to do some summer work, uh, but the, do dot org. Don't do dot com. Dot uh, com is by this other group that started coincidentally at the same time we did, and. Um, Anyway, so we're going to have to buy them out, I guess. But ask me, askmelearning.org is where you want to go. Okay, so back to, uh, back to this equation right here, back to the universal law of gravitation. And that big G right here, this value uh, that we talked about yesterday from the Cavendish experiment, it's 18, it's 1797, but 1800 is close enough. Um, they were still doing experiments in 1800 on it. And here is something, I went and looked this up on YouTube. I thought, well, let me get a good video for him that I can put in the link. This is from a physics, high school physics teacher. I'm guessing he's high school. Uh, in 2013. And I applaud him for um, the effort. Uh, it's, it's not going to work. But what he did was he took um, these kilogram weights and, and uh, electrical tape taped on the end of a meter stick. So he has, you know, two kilograms on each end. Uh, it's bend in that meter stick. That's okay. Then he took a bowling ball and put it on a yogurt can and a bowling ball on a yogurt container. And then he said, okay, then he heard it. I, I made it yellow, but he put this wire um, there, the hang to balance it all out. And then he put the clock there and he did a time lapse. I don't know why he thought it was going to take so long because gravity moves at the speed of light, but um, 
I guess it does have inertia, but come on, 12 hours. He thought, well, I'll watch it, and then we'll see a little bit of a, of a turn. Uh, no. Um, it, did, it did rotate, and he got all excited. And I'm thinking, that's not because of gravity, man. That can't be. And he finally admitted, yeah, I think that's because the air conditioner came on and the uh, currents in the air made it rotate. It wasn't because of gravity. thing is, gravity's, th there is attraction due to gravity, but in the Cavendish experiment, they didn't use bowling balls. They used 400 pound or 380 pound lead balls. Uh, and then these were like 20 pounds, these other, the other balls. So what he's trying to show is that these are attracted to each other simply because of their mass. Uh, as Einstein would say, they're in a gravity well. And this one's going, this, this smaller one's going to kind of fall into the gravity well of the bigger one. True, except that it's, there's, like in the Cavendish experiment, here's, here's more of the Cavendish, a modern day Cavendish experiment. Um, they don't, there, there's no, it's not subject to air prob. There's like vacuum in there. Uh, these are, like I say, these big, the, the big spheres are 400 pounds approximately. Uh, the smaller ones are about 12. Uh, so they're, so and it's on a quartz fiber and uh, it's in a, like I say, there's no air currents. They've taken out the air. And so the only thing that's going to make it rotate towards the other ones is perfectly balanced is the attraction of gravity. And so they, even then it doesn't, it, I think in Cavendish, it only did it about this far. If you can see, it's about, it's about a less than a quarter inch that it did actually move towards it. And that was enough. Uh, from there, they could determine G. So they take, in modern day, they take a laser beam and they point it at a mirror hanging on that, uh, it's a quartz fiber. And that will reflect off the mirror. And then the little bit that it moves right there, from there, they can work their way back and get a value for G. So that's how they do it. It's one of the top 10 experiments. It seems fairly simple, um, but it was a big deal in, uh, in 1797. And that Newton had already figured out the equation, but he didn't quite, he didn't have the material, the equipment to get G. So it took a hundred years and they went back and did it. And now they've got, I think at that point, they got it to like three Siggies and they're off a little bit. Now we got it down to, I don't know how far, someone asked in class, how, how many Siggies does it have now? How close are we? I threw out there, I don't know, eight, I don't know. Um, every Sig fig costs you another million dollars. So it ain't easy to get them. You go, who cares why you need that? Well, if we're trying to figure out planetary uh, probes, we want to know exactly how the gravity of that planet, what gravity well, what the slingshot effect is on that planet, how how deep is that gravity well? So it's important. And speaking of gravity wells, this is from XKCD, which Northern Public Schools and all their wisdom has banned. They they ban can you believe it? They banned XKCD. Uh, XKCD does some of the best science out there. And I think this is my favorite XKCD um, cartoon. And it's all about gravity wells in our solar system. So they don't show the sun. The sun would be right here and it's going to keep, remember we talked about this. We said, well, the earth's in a gravity well, the moon's in a gravity well, looking at just the side view of it. The sun's right there. If we keep going, there's a supermassive black hole. Well, this is just showing our solar system uh, with the sun. So if we continued this, let's try and let's try and get it accurate here. Okay, if I continue, uh, let's erase this. If I were to continue this to where the sun would be, uh, there's Jupiter. The sun, it's gravity well, and we're all stuck in that one. The sun would be keep on coming down. So my guess, somewhere down like that, maybe more, but. And the sun's right here. So we're all kind of stuck in its gravity well. But let's take a look at this. So look at Jupiter. Jupiter Jupiter has a big, uh, a, a lot of gravity. A lot of things, you can kind of think of it as falling into that gravity well, then it can't get out. It, it absorbs uh, a lot of asteroids. It's, Jupiter has saved our bacon many times. Uh, one, of the, one of the, in fact, uh, in the um, Frank equation, 
uh, there's an equation for whether you're going to have intelligent life or not. The Frank Drake equation. Um, is Frank Drake? Anyway, it's a Drake equation, but not not the singer Drake. Um, but there's an equation out there. You ought to look it up. It's pretty cool. Some people have it as their tattoo, uh, but it's a Drake equation. And one of the things with the Drake equation is uh, the necessity of having a large planet that kind of acts as a guard or a centurion uh, or a vacuum cleaner for your planet. And so Jupiter uh, acts as that. A lot of asteroids like Shoemaker Levy uh, got pulled into Jupiter and the explosion that happened when it went into Jupiter's atmosphere and burned up, the explosion was bigger than the entire Earth. So if Shoemaker Levy had hit us, we'd be toast. Um, it's called Shoemaker Levy because of who, who discovered it. They'll name an asteroid after you, by the way. If you're out in your backyard and you're a backyard astronomer, a lot of asteroids and stuff are named after a guy or have been discovered by a, 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 a minister, a preacher in Australia. And he's just, he goes out on his own and goes out in the out back and you look through his telescope because there's not many people doing that. Anyway, so the point is that Jupiter is there to protect us. Um, it's got a deep well, a lot of things fall in that. And there's, it's, it's uh, EO and Ganymede. Uh, I, I call it EO, it's an IO really. Ganymede, <clears throat> Europa, those are the three main moons uh, of Jupiter and they have their own little wells. Uh, then we get Titan as a big uh, moon with Jupiter, with Saturn and the rings up there, uh, Uranus and Neptune. And then we get to the earth uh, we talked about this in class, Earth, Moon, it's in their own. Uh, da, 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 da. Venus is further down the well of the sun. Uh, it's kind of cool, though. On Mars has a couple of moons, uh, Deimos and, Phob and Phobos. Uh, if you, eventually, we'll have probably a little outpost on Deimos and Phobos. Uh, but on Deimos, uh, you can escape that with a bicycle and a ramp. And so if, because the gravity is so small, the gravity well is so small that if you ride your bicycle up a ramp on Deimos, uh, you'll start to orbit. Uh, and eventually you'll go into orbit of Mars. Uh, Phobos is, is even, is about the same way. If you throw a baseball really hard, it'll leave the planet and never come back. Uh, because the well, the gravity well is so shallow. And then this is kind of cool, the last thing on this, and then we'll get to the test. Um, the Earth uh, is in its own gravity well. And so the ISS, the space shuttle, all that stuff is low earth orbit. That's not, you can think of this as energy, uh, how much energy it takes to get there. GPS satellites are up here, up the well. And then the biggest one, the highest, the highest satellites we have are these geosynchronous, uh, satellites that orbit the earth and they stay like one will stay just over Los Angeles all the time. It's always watching Los Angeles. One's all one or two or three is always watching Russia. You know, they always watch Beijing. So they're watching Afghanistan. So certain places, uh, and then they have their spy satellites as well. And we also use them for weather, things like that. Those are called geosynchronous, meaning that they orbit at the same rate that the earth does. So it always stays above us. Well, to go all the way around in 24 hours, that far distance out there, it's moving pretty fast. And then notice that the moon has its own. So as you rise, so the Apollo missions and also the uh, Starship, it'll have to get out of the Earth's gravity well and into the moon's gravity well. There's a point, uh, the zero gravity point um, between the Earth and the moon. Uh, that's not the Berry Center, but it's a point where the Earth's gravity starts, stops being dominant and the moon's gravity starts being dominant. So in other words, if you put a, there's a zero potential level, you put something there, you, you drop a rock right there, it'll stay. It's not going to go either way. But if you move a little bit, if you budget, it's very unstable. If you budget towards the moon, it will orbit the moon. If you budget towards the earth, it'll orbit the earth. Okay. And so there's a point, but it's actually pretty close to the moon because the earth's gravity well is so much deeper. 
Okay. Something we were going to talk about more in June, but it came up, so I talked about it now. There's plenty of stuff to talk about in June. Okay, so look up XKCD. Just type in XKCD and type in Gravity Wells, and this will pop up. There's posters of these. Uh, you'll see them on, uh, you know, physicists' walls in their classroom, in their offices. It's a really cool poster. Finally, before we get to Blue Day, this is Vera Rubin, and I talked about Vera Rubin. This is her. I like. I love this picture of her. This is when she was at Vassar. Um, uh, she or she, she graduated Vassar, so she she fought. Um, she had to fight because she was a woman, right? And full of man dominated astronomy, and she she was determined. And she, she was looking for the ultimate gravity well. Uh, you know, everything orbits around thing, gravity wells. You know, things rotate all the time. She figures, well, the Milky Way then uh, must orbit something. There must be some gravity well that's holding it in. And um, so she looked, she found that there wasn't one. And that eventually led her to uh, start to understand dark energy. So Vera Rubin, uh, her attempt to find the ultimate gravity well led her to understanding or trying to understand dark energy. Pioneer. Okay. Now, now we are ready for Blue Day. Now, I'm assuming, let me take a look at who we got here. Everybody on here has taken this test. Not Tipton. Uh, Tipton, you may have to get off now. Um, Everyone else has taken the test. And so I'm going to, I have that, I have your tests on my, thank you, Tipton. I have your tests uh, on my uh, iPad. And tonight I'm going to grade them and then I'm going to send you, uh, it's going to take a while. I guess I'll send you, I'll email you your test. That way, you can actually see what you made a mistake on. Then on that test, geez, I guess you print it off or throw it onto your iPad or something. You're going to correct it and then send it back to me. And then I give you blue points. Because you have your original test, right? If you sent me a copy of it. Now, those that didn't, like Eric, I have yours. And uh, Takaki, I have yours. And I guess I also have, uh, uh, I also have Brandon. He's not here, but I have Brandon. So, yeah. So anyway, it's due uh, Friday at midnight to get the blue points back, if you want the blue points. Okay. So wait till I send it back to you. Uh, email it back to you. I'll try and do it through Canvas, but I, Canvas has this weird wall that, uh, it's very irritating. It's easier just to do it through Gmail, right? As far as email stuff. Emailing through Canvas is a pain. Okay, here we go. So now we're looking. If you didn't take it, you better get off because uh, I'll funk you. <laughs> I, don't, I think all of you have taken it. Here we go. This is now, you're not the only one watching this. Um, my students in class will watch this too, because we went through it kind of quickly. Some were taking pictures, but all right, so here we go. Uh, this is test 6A. Now, one and two um, are not blue for one reason. Number one, if you looked at the, uh, if you were looking at your uh, equation sheets, that is on there. The free body on number one is on the equation sheets, but not the equation. And I knew that. I just want to see: Are did you are you going to are you paying attention? And sure enough, that was already on there. So, um, better be careful here. So, number one and two are not blue, but that is the correct answers. If on number two, and I'm, I'm going to be grading a lot of yours, except for Eric's and and Brandon's and, uh, and Takaki's already got yours, but, um, and you have your grades are already in the grade book. But uh, if you said like 
n is greater than mg, then you got a little bonus there. But those are the equations. Any questions on one and two? All right, number three. And number three, and I put uh, uh, Brandon, I thought Brandon did as good a job as me. And so I put his, uh, I like the way he did it on the um, equation sheet, equation sheet 16. I thought he did a great job on this one. He was very colorful though. So I kind of gave it away a little bit. I said, there's, you know, you can look at that and go, okay, there must be five forces, but that's fine. Um, head to tail, as I did with that meme yesterday, there is no difference between that and that. I mean, they're the same, they're, they're the same thing, okay? Uh, one is showing it uh, head to tail, one is showing it um, free body. Uh, but, um, well, the head to tail has the summation of forces. Dun, 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 dun. What else, what else, what else? I like, I, I've done many different ways of teaching this. And I like this one uh, because uh, it, it seems to work. You seem to do pretty well on it as far as the class goes. And so I'm going to, this summer, I, we do stuff with other physics teachers. I'm going to present this as a way to teaching this stuff. And notice that all the X's are cosine, 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 cosine. As long as the angles are from the horizontal, the X is cosine, the Y is sine. So if you have your test out, you can, if you have your paper copy your test, feel free to, to start correcting it now. But the thing is you have to use a blue pen or a green pen or any color pen except red or pencil, okay? except for what you did the test in and for in red. Okay, you can hear the color. Um, yeah, so you don't need to wait for me to grade your iPad stuff. You already, you have your test, you know what you did. Uh, for the Y, of course, it's sign. Um, student asked me, where'd you get that 47 degrees at? Well, that's the, that's the force of thrust that I used. Uh, you're, you're limited on the um, buoyancy. It has to go straight up. Now, it could be any length you want. You're limited on MG. It has to go down. It's a balloon, so it's probably pretty small, but you could say it's a heavy balloon. Um, RA, you're limited. It has to oppose motion. Force of wind, you're limited. It has to be at 10 degrees, it says, above right horizontal. Uh, the one vector that you can play with, and the summation of force is limited because it has to go at 40 degrees above right horizontal. So the one vector you can play with is the force of thrust. That could be any direction, it didn't say. So any direction, any length you want. And so when I did mine, that ended up being my force of thrust. And so I took a, ruler, a protractor and measured it in 47 degrees. But people were, had their force of thrust going every which way and that was fine. Okay, so over here, you have to include the um, buoyancy uh, you have to include the MG, uh, negative MG. Oh, my eyes are killing me. Questions on number three. I was so excited when I graded that, I ran into my room. My wife was laying there, ran in there and told her uh, how great you all did and during a pandemic. And she acted like she was listening to me and then she went back to what she was doing. But, but it was like, exciting to me to see how well you all did. Number four, I graded that a couple nights ago. And that one I thought, to be honest with you, I thought that'd be black. Uh, oh, by the way, so the one and two are not blue. Everything else is blue. Two through nine, three through nine are all blue. But I kind of thought this might be black, but you know what? People did so well on it. They didn't get it right, but they did so well. Uh, that I almost didn't make it blue, which is unheard of. So two things you guys are doing really well. Uh, you're doing you're doing that really well, and you're doing that really well. And those those are two extremely important things. This skill of being able to manipulate variable manipulate the uh, units. Every subject you go into, every science subject, every engineering subject, you got to be able to do this. 
So it gives you a real advantage. Uh, here's the main problem. Students, you all are getting pretty good at doing the conversions, but the main problem is people are still having trouble isolating a variable. Now, Norman Public Schools has done you a disservice if you don't know how to isolate a variable. Uh, that was something you're supposed to learn in eighth grade or ninth grade at the latest. And I think I have 10 students out of 75 that still can't do it. Um, I'll be glad to sit and work with you on that. Um, I think a variable though, it's like, it's like not knowing, not just not knowing how to spell. It's like not understanding the letter L in English language or something, or not getting the point that there's an X, Y, Z in there somewhere. So you got to know it. You can't get away with not knowing it. Uh, you've been burned on this ever since August in this class. So please, the, but most people can, can do it. If you can't, don't feel bad. You're still in high school. If you're 40 years old and you cannot set a variable, that's on you. But in high school, it's on us. So we need to help you. Mr. Ashley. Yeah. So for uh, number four, did we just write over what we got? Uh, if you did it in pencil, I have your, if you send it to me, I already have it. So I have a record of it. You can erase the whole daggone thing and do it all in blue. If it's just a couple of corrections and you do them in blue or green or something, that's fine too. Uh, something that when I can tell that you worked on it. The main mistake, a lot of mistakes students had here is they forgot to flip the M or they said, okay, it's VT squared and then they never squared it. You know, that's common. Everyone does that. I do that sometimes. Uh, if you didn't have time to go ahead and do the math on that, you still could have got an 18 out of 20 if you just left it. And, and a lot of students did. They just, they, they left it at that. And that's okay. I, I still, even if you get the right answer, I still go back and I check your work. So um, plus two though, if you get it totally right, when I'm grading that tonight. Number five, there's the rowboat. Uh, yeah, buoyancy up, um, water drag. Drag always opposes motion. It's about two points per, per vector. Uh, the equation is three points each. Notice they're equal to zero because it's moving at a constant rate of 15 knots. So speed's not changing. There is no MA, MAX or MAY. Well, there's no MAY because the boat's not levitating or sinking, but there's no MAX either because there's no acceleration. Okay, uh, number six, that was broken up into four parts. You got four points for the label, the drawing. Uh, four points for the F equals MA stuff, uh, four points for then doing the details and the numbers, and then a couple of points for the kinematics at the end. It's very simple kinematics. So there's a pretty common, uh, you know, problem in AP physics and AP. I mean, you hit this stuff in chapter five in AP. Okay. No angles involved. That's good. Number seven was the essay. And I, I started writing stuff down. Then I just blacked it all out because I said, you know, um, I wanted this to be free ranging on how you answered it. I wanted you to be able to just, uh, so I'm not, I don't want to limit you. That's why I didn't put on the key. I didn't do anything. So I'm, what, what are you going to do is you'll, you'll just memorize and you'll just pair it back to be what I wrote. So I wanted it to come from, you know what a lot of students did? They looked off the um, equation sheets, which doggone it. I'm not, I, I gave them credit because it's like, it's not open notes, but it's open equation sheet. And if it's there, why not include it? So they got a lot of points uh, for doing that. And that's fine. All right. Anyway, so there's your essay question. Um, eight and nine is the bowling ball. Uh, first uh, first uh, sinking, then rising. Uh, a couple of things on this one. Notice buoyancy is always straight up. Uh, the air, the water drag is always opposing motion, uh, the RW. 
uh, on the left on eight is all equals zero uh, because it's terminal velocity, meaning it's not accelerating. And on the uh, right, it's equal to MAY. It is accelerating because it hasn't reached terminal velocity yet. So uh, there you go. And I will grade yours tonight sometime. I've got other things to do too, but I'll get to it. And you'll get it back, let's say before midnight. Uh, you'll get an email back to you. And then you have till Friday at midnight. To turn, you have 48 hours then to turn it in turn it back in i suppose no because you don't know what you missed you don't have many points you missed yeah if you just want to do blue pin now once I'm, I'm going to hit the i am recording this i hope uh i'm going to uh put this video up and then you could just correct and then turn it back in and that would be good enough for your blue so you don't need to wait till you get it back, actually, if you've already turned it in. Okay. All right. Well, that was short and sweet. Questions? Don't forget, tomorrow night, well, I'll see you tomorrow, but then tomorrow night, seven. Uh, give us a little space in there in your evening schedule. Or if you can't come, uh, have your mom do it. All right. So any questions? Otherwise, if there's no questions, uh, you're free to go. And stick around if you got them. Yeah, I got a question. Yeah. Um, when are you going to post the keys to some of those sheets? Oh, good question, Eric. I'm not, I'm, I can't ask me that today. I'm going to post a key to everything up through six. Well, not six, four, because that one we're still working on. But I'll post a key to everything else up through six, seven tonight. Okay. All right. All right. See you. See you.